guys, Tired Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Hopefully you guys have had a good start to the week. So, at the time I'm shooting, this is Monday night. We'll probably be up by Monday night, but a lot of you may see this by tomorrow morning. If so, welcome by the way. But, I've been talking a lot about um, tomorrow's potential for severe weather on Tuesday, September 19th. This had a uh, day three hatch risk with it for hail. Wind threat is also at slight risk levels, but the tour threat is at 2%. But we could still see some changes. We often will see some late in the morning whenever it comes to the severe weather setups, if they are going to happen at all. There's a, there's a pretty good uh, general, uh, general synopsis here that's discussing the uh, dry line that's going to end up being set up over here across the uh, southern plains, particularly towards west central Oklahoma and towards the panhandle of Texas. This is going to be our, uh, it's going to be where our storms will likely initialize on that dry line later in the evening from the looks of it. Could see some changes made here. There's a little bit of model discrepancy as well. But basically as far as the upper winds are concerned, we're going to jump back a little bit on here. We don't really have a super stout low pressure here, but we do get a little something to pop up here. Jet stream is relatively zonal, so I think this is a big part of what keeps that tornado threat kind of hampered down a bit. We do get a little bit of a dig going on here, almost like a shortwave tries to form, but it doesn't quite become anything super duper robust. But there's enough energy here and enough moisture return to where we can get some storms to fire here. So, in turn, you can get decent instability out of this. And you can also get lift thanks to that dry line setup. Moisture was going to be a question, but shear is going to be the main component missing. If we look towards the mid levels of the atmosphere, it's going to be a pretty similar deal here. Not really a whole lot to work with. It's kind of lacking with the uh, shear in general. I do think this will likely lead to slightly more elevated storms here, possibly. Could be a decent amount of uh, precipitable water here too with the moisture returns which I'm going to get into in just a moment. But if you look at, for example, the uh, low level jet, not really a whole lot to work with. The timing just isn't really there. In our area of interest, I think the uh, low level jet is just kicking in a little bit too late. Plus we're getting closer towards fall and when we get towards fall, we sometimes can struggle with that instability. It's kind of the same thing in winter. We still have uh, ample daytime heating, of course, still. So there's always that chance for the un uh, for the uh, unforeseen, so to speak. So definitely something to keep an eye on there. We look at temperatures. Still pretty sufficient for uh, severe weather across the board here. So this is heading into the afternoon tomorrow across the region here. We're getting into the 80s and 90s. So like I said. Plenty of uh, sufficient heating here at the surface, of course. But, of course, when we get a little bit later into the evening, our uh, storms start to fire right around OOZ, which is what we were kind of expecting from the get-go, right around sunset, maybe a little bit after. But, of course, like I said, that timing with the shear is going to be the uh, main inhibiting point behind, behind there being um, all hazards. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at our moisture returns here real quick. You can see that we do get a nice little surge from the Gulf right here. Almost in a little bit of a north to south motion here. But like I said, shear ends up lagging way behind. And the moisture return itself isn't the greatest. Still very sufficient, I would say. We're not getting those 70 degree dew points like we were towards the late spring and into early parts of summer. That was ridiculous whenever we were seeing uh, crazy uh, severe weather events over towards Mexico in the uh, su southern uh, high plains here but we do get a couple of spots where we get up to about 70 here it'll be interesting to see what we end up finding off of these soundings here one thing that I've noted of course like I said before and this is exactly what I was talking about if you look on the uh, skew T chart here when you see uh, markings a lot like this for example where you see the uh, little you see this little thing going on here that usually is a decent indicator of there being a little bit of an elevated nature with these storms. If you're looking for a tornado threat, you're looking for these to be rooted more towards the surface. 
what we're see and this is also indicated by the storm relative felicity here if this was rooted more to the surface and there was a little bit less inhibition here too for example seeing a uh, weak cap in play as well then I think we would have a little bit more stout of a tornado threat but one thing I am noting here is of course with the threat for hail we are at 1.0 that's usually a, a good number to indicate a significant hail threat and the lapse rates are moderately steep at 7.1 degrees celsius per kilometer so that being said here along with D cape of uh, 1433 to put a perspective for you 800 uh, joules per kilogram and D cape is more than sufficient enough for damaging winds I'm definitely seeing the potential for some very squally weather probably line segments where we could see damaging winds and a uh, large hail there is a chance that we could also see a hatch risk with the wind threat now also threat for heavy rains pretty high with the uh, precipitable water at 1.46 inches so the there's uh, some pretty potent there's um, some potent energy here in the atmosphere in regards to the uh, setup here but as far as tornado threats concerned I wouldn't worry too too much about that but if we go later into the evening here I'd be a little less concerned about that but as we continue to go on here let's go ahead and take a look at those lapse rates I think they're going to be steepest probably early in the day here. I actually have to update this because 0Z is just about finished coming in now. But um, here we are looking towards lunchtime. It's to moderately steep lapse rates. I think the main thing to focus on, and here's another good indicator of it, we'll go back looking at that dry line which actually has trended a little bit stronger based off of the uh, last few runs here like for example and this is what I mean by a stronger dry line the steep contrast between uh, the moist sector which is for example right here if I can switch over oops I'm trying to change the color I was trying to change it to a different color but I guess this will do but you see where we have this 63 right here and this 47 right here that's a pretty solid contrast here and that's of course where our dry line is formed anywhere out ahead of the dry line tends to typically be where our moist sector will be and then behind that we usually have the much drier air like let's say for example over towards New Mexico we have the dry line at 19 degrees Fahrenheit but ahead of it of course there's the 63 so that being said pretty stout dry line in place with that also will come the increased potential lapse rates with a uh, with not so, so impressive shear, we could see we could see some pretty large hail here. Not saying that the tornado threat zero wouldn't surprise me again if we ended up seeing a two percent threat. It all depends on how that low level jet kind of kicks in. I I wouldn't rule out the possibility of at least maybe one tornado, but even so, it's kind of a toss up as to how things will play out with that. As far as instability is concerned, we're looking at Cape now. We can see that we have pretty sufficient instability. Nothing to necessarily write home to or write home about, so to speak. But we are getting into that 1,000 to 1,500, maybe even a couple of pockets, about 2,000 joules per kilogram. And again, when you look at uh, some of these uh, soundings here, Again, main thing to be concerned with there, of course, damaging winds, hail. This is actually one of the uh, higher um, significant hail parameters that I've seen here with a uh, 1.8 here. Again, tornado threat with this is a little bit better. We were kind of trending a little bit further north than what I was expecting. But even so, it does look like we're slightly elevated here lapse rates are still sufficient so I mean like I said this isn't a 0% uh, tornado chance but this is definitely not quite as favorable for tornadoes as um, what I was originally thinking Tr models have kind of trended away from that just a little bit it's part of weather baby but as far as instability is concerned it really seems to retreat more to the north which will uh, kind of keep this event short-lived there is the day after that we do have to watch as well for severe weather 
I don't expect it to go anything above a slight risk on that. Tomorrow we could see maybe even an enhanced risk in regards to the uh, hail threat or maybe even damage from winds. We'll have to see how things play out. That being said, as the model has just finished loading completely, this is looking at our uh, time frame for these storms to develop. Like I said, right around OOZ is the time that we would expect this to develop, which would be around Zulu time. So let's say about maybe 7, 6, 7, maybe even 8 o'clock, these storms start to develop. It's going to be a small little sector of storms. Mainly going to, it could most likely be linear, multicellular. Wouldn't expect anything super discreet. And as a result, this is going to be a pretty short lived event. So. Form around OOZ, by the time we get towards O3Z, a lot of these are losing steam already, so I wouldn't expect a whole lot out of these, but of course, when it's game time, a lot of things tend to change. That goes to anyone that's a sports fan, by the way. But, interesting day ahead tomorrow, we'll see how this plays out. If needed be, I'll make an update in the morning, if not, then who knows what will happen. If possible, I may even try to stream it, but we'll see how things play out. But Hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. It's been tired, metalhead, but weatherman. I can't even get my own outro right. But um, if you like the video, of course, you know what to do: like, comment, subscribe, share. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, definitely do that. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care.